is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another solar energy update video. It's the beginning of May, so time for April's update. How have the solar panels been getting on this month? Okay, it's been a pretty good solar month here in Norfolk, 1,004.6 kilowatt hours according to this My Energy chart. But as always, depending on where you're looking and which app you look, you get a slightly different number. For example, this chart, which comes out of Home Assistant, is actually fed by the same My Energy data from the My Energy servers. I use their API for this, and it says 1,000.4 kilowatt hours. And then even stranger, the My Energy app again shows generation of 998 kilowatt hours on this main page. So I've got the same My Energy data in three different places, and it's showing slightly different values. But you know where we are: 998, 1,000, 1,004. But those are all a little bit low because, according to the inverters themselves, they tell me I've generated 1,018 kilowatt hours. And you can see that here on the chart at the far right hand side. You can see that we've just gone above the 1,000 kilowatt hour mark for April. So, yeah, it's been a very good month. Looking good as well, according to previous years. But the last place that I can have a look for my solar values is my Victron inverter, the Victron inverter that's connected to my Pylon Tech batteries. That also is monitoring all of our AC solar. And that says 1,021 kilowatt hours. Now that I believe a little bit more than the ones that are using CT clips because this is actually using an energy meter and it's much more accurate. So 1,018 from the inverters, pretty close. 1,021 kilowatt hours from Victron, we're in that ballpark. Now I say I had a good month. Now if you have a look at the stats here, the dark blue line over on the right hand side, 513.2 kilowatt hours this month. Well that's actually the second worst that I've had in the last five years and very close to the worst that we had in 2019. And then look at the green, 293 kilowatt hours. That is actually the worst April that I've actually had so far. So it hasn't actually been a very good solar month, but because I've got that third array, the extra 212.3 kilowatt hours means that actually it's the second best April I've had overall because I've got some more solar. So over a megawatt hour in April, yep. Adding extra solar panels really helps. So that's 293 kilowatt hours from our Solis array. That's 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels and a two kilowatt inverter. Solis, we've actually had a few issues with this month. Our first array is the one that I think of as my main array, 513.2 kilowatt hours. And uh, yeah, I think we peaked at just over 27 kilowatt hours on the 4th of April. Pretty good month. I've always said if for that array, if we can get over 500 kilowatt hours, we can be self-sustaining. But our latest Solis inverter, that's a 2.5 kilowatt inverter connected to 1.1 kilowatts of solar panels south facing on our garage roof and 1.8 kilowatts of solar panels on our gable wall. So they're actually gable mounted panels. Now, unfortunately, that array we've had issues because Solis are stopping use of the Solus Home app and they want you to migrate your data and inverters across to the Solus Cloud app. Now when I've done that, my main inverter migrated, my new inverter did not. So I placed a support call and Solus worked on it for a week. I've got to say the communication and the support was pretty patchy and pretty awful, um, almost as if they didn't understand what I was doing and I got a new support person every single day and they started from scratch again. So it was, it was a pretty awkward process. Eventually they've got the inverter added to Solus Cloud, but as a result of that, they've lost all my historical data. So I can see historical data on Solus Home, but that's about to disappear as of the end of April. So I've got 64.9 kilowatt hours on this app for this array. And uh, on the other app for the same array, I've got 142.4 kilowatt hours. So I add the two together and I get my 212 kilowatt hours for the month. One of the things I like about having so much data in so many different places is that the different pictures tell a different story. So this chart on Home Assistant, looking at my total solar generation, it's showing the peak kilowatts on each day. And if I have a look at how many days were above six kilowatts and how many days there were below, I can see one, two, I can only see three days in the entire month of April where at some point we didn't have the heavens open and some sunshine and get over six kilowatts, just three days. So it has actually been a really sunny month. 
Again from Home Assistant, this chart instead of showing peak power is showing the accumulated kilowatt hours per day. And what's interesting here are the varieties of how many high days or low days we had. The peak, just over 50 kilowatt hours, but there's quite a few there, over 30 or 40 kilowatt hours. But look how many are below 10. One, two, three. I can see three days where we're below 10 kilowatt hours, one quite close to 10. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days where we are below 20 kilowatt hours. Now that's giving you the impression there that you know, a 20 kilowatt hour day, we can survive really comfortably. 10, we need the support of a home storage battery as well. So yeah, April's been really, really good. So if we haven't needed the home storage battery very much, and we definitely haven't actually run out of home storage battery, that means we've been able to run without the grid. So over on the right hand side of this chart, grid import, we can see it's pretty flat at the bottom. We've used no energy. If you look all the way across to the left in February, yes, we started to have quite a few days where we were self-sufficient, not drawing from the grid. In March, I messed around and I did lots of testing with heating, leaving it on permanently and using as much as we could. And we drew lots of energy from the grid. In April, I've just gone back to normal. I haven't worried about the heating. I haven't worried about the hot water or usage or anything. I've just used it as and when we wanted to. And we've had sufficient energy and the home storage battery has meant that there's no grid usage. So grid import is absolutely nothing or virtually nothing. If you look on the very right hand side of this chart, you can see a tiny little blue speck at the bottom compared to March. That's how little we used. 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours. So looking at our octopus data, yes, 6.69 kilowatt hours was our consumption for the month at a huge cost of £13.97. You've got to love having small energy bills, haven't you? This app, the Go Agile app, has a really nice comparison feature where I can compare what if I was on the Agile tariff because I'm on the Octopus Go tariff. If I'd have been on the Agile tariff, I would have spent £15.90 on energy instead of the £13.97. Over on the top left hand side, it also shows the comparison between the average price per kilowatt hour of the Go and Agile tariff. Now, as you can see, 40 pence a kilowatt hour is what I was spending on the Go tariff because I'm burning those few tenths that I can't avoid at peak time. But on the Agile tariff, that same energy at the same time was only 22.92 pence. So the price of energy on the Agile tariff is actually cheaper for me right now. But because I'm using so little of it, then it really doesn't make any difference and it's just the standing charge that is making the big difference here. The Victron inverter data here for grid usage, that is a little bit low compared to the actual numbers from Octopus Energy. It says we only used 3.4 kilowatt hours. Interestingly, none of that from the grid went into the battery. But where did all that energy go? All the energy we generated how did we consume it? The Victron view shows that we consumed 722 kilowatt hours, 604 came from solar, 3.4 from the grid, and 114 kilowatt hours from the battery. So that's a good, very statistical view of how we used energy this month. Hot water heating was via our eddy device and all of it came from solar, none of it came from grid import overnight, 92.4 kilowatt hours and solar charging only again on the Zappi, no charging overnight, 265 kilowatt hours. And lastly, the house consumed 409.8 kilowatt hours. This home energy chart is a really handy one. It breaks down all the individual devices. So this is my Casa Smart Plugs, um, a Shelly monitor for my Toshiba air conditioning and the Eddy and Zappi coming straight out of the My Energy app. So if you look at the top, the first one is a Zappi configuration. So my Zappi is using the most energy. Eddy for solar is next. Then after that, uh, Toshiba air conditioning. Looking down at the scale, that's just under 100. I think about 91, 92 kilowatt hours for the month was used in heating using the Toshiba Aircom, that's an air-to-air -air heating system. And then below the Zappi with solar again, that's the second definition, and I'll get to that in just a moment, why I've got two definitions of that. Um, we've got the ensuite, so the ensuite was using, what's that, about 30 to 40 kilowatt hours, the oven and hob less than that, the cloakroom heater, again, that's an immersion inside the towel radiator, that only looks like 20 kilowatt hours, TV in the lounge, less than 20 kilowatt hours, the internet and the home assistant hub, that's less than 20 kilowatt hours, and the air fryer and the microwave, I might as well stop monitoring those because I can now see that they're using very, very little energy. 
So those duplicate definitions of the Eddie and Zappy, what on earth is going on in my Home Assistant system? And it's basically a, the My Energy system. Um, I had some issues with data dropouts and My Energy sent me a new hub in the hope of solving those. So I installed the new hub, got rid of the old one, disconnected it and lost all of my My Energy devices and Home Assistant because they're connected to the hub. So I then had new devices created because of the new hub. If I'd have named them the same name, instead of adding mini zappy etc then i could have got away with it and those definitions would have been the same but because i changed some of the names i got new devices so now i've got energy stored in some devices up to a certain point and then when i changed the hub they started recording the energy definition into new ones so this month i've got quite a few extras as it moves on over the months ahead, I won't show and I won't see any of the old data. I'll only see the new data. So a little bit of a quirk, but a new My Energy Hub. And no, unfortunately, the data dropouts haven't fully stopped yet. This is the energy display for the month of April from the Shelly monitor monitoring our air to air heating. So 91.67 kilowatt hours was our energy usage. Looks like the first five days of April, we had the heating on a little bit more than we did any other time. But other than that, three three and a half four kilowatt hours is all we were using with one two three four five six days where it's hardly on at all won't be long and the heating will be off but maybe i'll be turning this back on in air conditioning mode hot water usage has been higher than the last three months we're at 2368 liters and as i said i haven't worried about it we've just used more but with more solar energy available, I haven't had to worry or haven't had to think about trying to be efficient. So we've basically just heated the hot water and it's filled up a lot more than it normally would. You can see that here in this chart from Home Assistant, which is using the Mixergy data. I have a Mixergy hot water tank. This is showing the current charge. So this is the percentage full of hot water statistic for the Mixergy tank. And where it's at the top, the blue lines, that's when we're at 100%. That's when we've filled the tank and uh, it's full of hot water. So there are very few days where we didn't have a full tank at some point during the day. And only a few days where we got down as low as, what, 20% of hot water. But even though so we only had 20% hot water, we still had lots of hot water. Now that's the difficult thing to explain with Mixergy. The hot water tank is split into two sections. You've got a hot water section and a cold water section. So although we've only got 20% in the hot water section, it's still at 45 to 50 degrees. So as this chart is showing, this is the actual hot water temperature in the hot water section. We had continuously available hot water throughout the entire month of around what, 42, 43 degrees was the absolute lowest. That's still warm enough, hot enough to shower in. So as you can see, our hot water temperatures are really, really good, even if the hot water tank's not full. The last chart I'll show you is this one. It's from Victron again, and it's showing the state of charge of the battery and how low we're going. How much battery are we using? So it's the blue section at the top of the graph. The thinner it is, the less of the battery we use. The thicker the blue section, the more of the battery we use. So the scale is on the right hand side. It's at 100%. So when the blue section is right at the top, we filled the battery and we filled the battery on every day in April, apart from one, two, three, four days. And we went as low as well do you know i don't think we even reach 60 percent, so we're hardly denting the battery now and that's going to be the same sort of story for the rest of the year or the rest of summer anyway until we start using the heating a lot more so i'm probably going to turn the battery down a bit and not fill it as far um, because there's just no need to we've got plenty of battery so i might as well look after it so in summary we generated 1018 kilowatt hours we imported just 6.69 kilowatt hours at a cost of just £13.97, including standing charge. Export back to the grid was 270 kilowatt hours. Eddy for our hot water, 92.4 kilowatt hours. And Zappy for charging our electric cars, 265 kilowatt hours. And finally, heating just 145 kilowatt hours in April. That's it for me, but don't forget to leave some comments to let me know how you got on for the month of April. How are you getting on with installing solar panels, batteries, and getting on with heating, etc.? Have you turned your heating off yet? More videos to come about home storage batteries, portable batteries, solar panels, electric cars, and all this great fun. Take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.